from a from a place of, of, of deep shame and guilt, which is the greatest place to try and uh, you know be helpful and remind everybody that you're more than a demon that tried to murder them. Uh, <laughs> so. Season two is phenomenal. Like it captures everything about the campaign, and you guys took me through the whole range of emotions. I was laughing. You made me cry in episode three, and then I was jumping around my apartment celebrating with episode ten. It's just, it's so good. Oh, and yay! Yes, that's what we wanted. That's exactly yes. what we wanted. <laughs> that's the best. <laughs> I love it. Um, and so Travis Grog is. I love Grog, but he's so often the comic relief and like the tank. In this season, he really gets taken through like this more emotional storyline by touching on grief and like guilt and darkness from his past. What was it like to explore that as both an actor and a writer? It was wonderful. It's it's rewarding. It's it's fulfilling. It's it's so interesting to go back and, and tackle all those things. And I've said this before, but having a room of writers with us as well that are coming from it from an outside perspective, it, it just helps flush out a more interesting story dynamic than I think we probably would have been able to do um, on our on our own. And I I love Grog so much. He's such a dummy, but there's such a heart of gold in all of that, that it makes those moments where really the most relatable emotions, they, they hit home, right? And usually you're laughing along with Grog because you can, you can feel sort of the childlike interpretation or the instincts that he has. And that's why he, I feel like he's so enjoyable, not only to play, but to, to watch. But in those moments where he hurts, those are things that, you know, people feel guilt is, you know, sticks with all of us. And, you know, um, if you're the tallest, biggest, strongest person in the room, the expectation for you to be able to handle anything is sometimes, you know, uh, too much, too much to handle. And it, 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 it just shows that even he needs to go back and look at his very best buddies who is only yay high. And that's where his, you know, his real strength comes from. That's where his heart is. And those sorts of stories just make me in incredibly happy those are the little moments of of her uh, heroism that that exist in grog and really in all of the characters but they all have different shapes and and forms and so that was that that was wonderful to to play yeah i'm always in your guys's campaign drawn to those characters that just react on the first thought that pops into their head <laughs> yep no filter yeah. brain mouth <laughs> right so i always love when we really get into the like deep character stuff with them too it's so fun um, and then Ashley, I love Grog and Pike. It's absolutely one of my favorite relationships in this. And I loved Pike's uh, arc last season where she had this crisis of faith. And you were gone for a lot of the first campaign because just you weren't able to be there in person. So what was it like to really explore Pike's growth with Vox Machina the entire time? And were you surprised by any of the ways she was incorporated into the story? Yeah, that was definitely... Um... <sighs> you know, leaving and having to go to work in New York and then having to come back and sort of having, uh, trying to have that make sense in the story, which gave Matt so much to, so much he had to do of the reasons why Pike had to go in and out. And made it work. you made it work. Yep. And, you know, for the series, it was, we, we talked about, and we, we didn't want to have that, you know, it's, it's, it was our chance to sort of rewrite history in a way, but not change the story of Vox Machina, but more change our personal story and letting me have a chance to actually be there and experience some of the parts that I didn't get to. So for me, it's really special and very cool that I finally get to be there in some parts that I wasn't. Um, and, you know, it's, I think, Pike's crisis of faith in the last season, it's its sort of, that's even tested more in the second season. And, you know, we met them in the first season and this season we're sort of getting into the nitty gritty and to the personal intimate stories. And I'm just glad now I get to be here for it. I love it. It's, it's so great. And yeah, I love that you get to be in the whole thing. Um, Talison, Percy kind of went through the ringer last year a little bit. <laughs> he had his friends coming with him, kind of fighting zombies and vampires and demons. How has that experience changed Percy and his perception of the rest of Vox Machina? I think he finally, at least on the good side, I think he finally at least realized that he has a family, uh, that it, he wasn't alone. He finally got through his skull. Um, and I think he understands that now because now he feels very guilty 
and a lot of shame for being such a burden to his family uh, and that he's been screwing everything up. And uh, he's, he's going to spend the next uh, few episodes uh, trying to make up for that very badly uh, uh, from, a, from a place of, of, of deep shame and guilt, which is the greatest place to try and uh, you know, be helpful and remind everybody that you're more than a demon that tried to murder them. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it'll go great. Uh, it goes great. Really wow. helpful. It, he's going to be super helpful. Nothing bad is going to happen. <laughs> nothing ever bad happens with Percy. <laughs> no, oh. especially when you're, you know, nothing bad happens when you ignore your damage. That's his mock mock and his like slogan. Yeah, it goes much. away. <laughs> you ignore, ignore things that go away. <laughs> Well, that is my time. I could talk to you guys all day. Mm. The show is so good. I can't wait for more people to see it. I can't wait to see it on the big screen in a room full of critters. Yes! Yes! The 19th is going to be awesome! It's going to be so good. And I just got a personal note right before I leave. I want to say Critical Role is one of those shows that, for me, changed my life in so many ways and opened up my mind and understanding to what storytelling could be. So just truly, truly thank you. And it's, it's so good. I cannot wait. You Thank are you amazing. So much. Thank, Thank you so, so much. much.